All money must be spent for our gorgeous garden. Oh no. Oh no, an emissary from the Holy Father has come to our court and he announced that we are anathema to everything that is holy. We've been excommunicated. Oops. Long live Queen Petunia of Iceland. She's six years old. She's betrothed to Bjorn Fritriksson, who is, uh, has the blood of Ragnar Lothbrok. And Queen Petunia has one, two, three, four beautiful bloodlines. Can we make more? We must live up to our grandmother's name. Oh no! Since an invasion, thousands of exotic ships have arrived in Golfo de Cadiz, spewing out num numberless hordes of un ululating? What is it? Undulating? Ululating warriors in weird armor, sporting feathers and bone. These invaders from beyond the sunset worship hellish demon gods, sacrificing the populations of entire towns on altars erected on top of pyramid shaped wooden ephesus. Ephesuses? They cut their victims' heart out, carefully flay them, and let their devil priests wear their skins for many days. The Blessed Virgin have mercy! Another huge fleet of the bloodthirsty Aztecs have been sighted in Land's End. The populace is fleeing in fear of the, channel of the charnel altars of the foreign demon gods. The dreadful lord of the invaders has allegedly taken a, a vow to conquer the whole world in the name of... This guy. The Aztec God of the Sun. End of war. 183,000. Oh my god. And the Aztec Empire is established. <gasps> a blist has passed. Lily Enigmatic lived a pious life, truly following the example of God. She passed on 12 April 1038, and people have long wondered if she would be considered a true Christian or not. A large ceremony is held in Lily's honor by the Pope to celebrate the life she lived, a virtuous exemplar of a true Catholic. The Pope will write her name in among the pious Christians of old. Casting of piety in life, a stalwart example in death. Blessed be her memory, once again in the arms of God. Blessed be her name. Now, a saint in heaven. A blessed lily was a true exemplar of the Christian faith, living a pious and moderate life. In a grand announcement, Pope Honorius II has decided to canonize Lily the Venerable. Many tales are told about the saint and the feats she did in life. If one visits the church in Vestis land, one will occasionally still hear the voice of St. Lily among the singing voices of the faithful. St. Lily was so pious that even after her death, she still attends the prayers to God. It is a great honor for the family of the blessed saint. May we all aspire to become as pious as her. Blessed be her name. We have a bloodline. Go, Grandma! Um, okay, the King of Burgundy is Jewish. The, pa the faithful prepare for war. Hey, yeah, let's go. My men are ready. To Burgundy! Um, you know, let's let's ignore the greater threats and uh, let's go after the tiny little Jewish nation. Sure. Smart Pope. But what do we know? We're only 11. Never mind, we're on a crusade for Jerusalem. Okay, all parts of the kingdom of Jerusalem held by King Jack of the Second of Jerusalem. Wait a minute. This is our tar- <laughs> Alright, to Jerusalem! <laughs> Deus Vault Crusade for Jerusalem. Let Battle of Nazareth. Come, my warriors. Defeat the Cathar heathens. We will be gaining glory in this world. And we are currently in the leader of the crusade. Catholic Crusade for Jerusalem has ended. Pope Honor Honorius II won. Victorious Crusaders. Queen Petunia was granted the new lands of Jerusalem to Alvar Parling. With our money, we're also going to build a great library of learning up here in Iceland. For we are going to be the technological center. News has reached me that a claimant to my title's Pine is hiring men for an attack against me. And we shall study rulership and make our realm a great place and hopefully uh, increase our education. Pine of Pine's host has declared Pine's host claim on Iceland. War on Queen Petunia, the sword of the Lord. We are the sword of the Lord. Oh wow, what a name. Didn't even notice. Okay. And his troops are coming into land. We, uh, I, I don't think we're gonna have a problem with this, except, you know, we should not be leading troops. Yep. Uh, Pine. Pine, you should not attack a mountainous island. It, it doesn't end well for you, sir. At all. <laughs> Come on. Chase him down. 
Oh, and these are uh, other oh, Arctic terrain. That's why I never remember if they're mountains or hills, because they're neither. They're Arctic. And there we go. Goodbye, Pine. You're now in my prison. <sighs> you know what? Can I just banish you? Banish. I will steal 500 gold from you. Sure. Get out of here. Go make babies with your wife and leave me alone. I am surely with child. My husband will be pleased. Good. With the blood of Ragnar Lothbrok, you will enter our family line. It will be glorious. This is going to be my first child and I feel completely lost. What if I'm doing something wrong? What if something bad happens? What should I do while I wait for the day of my labor? You wait. You wait and wait and wait is what happens. But yeah. I need to pray for my child's good health. After the council meeting, court chaplain Urgo asked me to exchange a few words in private. He has uncovered a rumor concerning a rare artifact. Go! Find it! Shoot! The city of Cordoba, sometimes referred to as the jewel of the world, is conceived by the Aztecs, who are not impressed. It compares poorly to the great imperial metropolis of the Valley of Mexico and the Yucatan, and the Aztecs sacrifice a hundred Cordoban citizens for their shameless impudence. Disconcerting. News from across the sea. Rumors have reached Europe of a titanic struggle taking place across the Great Sea in the homeland of the Aztecs. The Aztecs themselves rarely discuss it with outsiders, but it appears they have been locked in a deadly war for some time with the Tawantasuya, a great empire from the mountains and jungles far to the south of Teno... Teno... I could never say this name. Uh, they are ruled by the Sapa Inca, who is allegedly the direct and descendant of some kind of sun god. If the stories are to be believed, the warriors of the Inca are armed with mysterious thunder sticks capable of felling a man from great distance. The Aztec have only recently been able to halt their advance, in large part thanks to their mounted warriors riding horses imported from Europe. Thunder sticks? Sun gods? I have no time for this nonsense. Delicacies from the far west. War and disease are not the only things the Aztecs have brought with them from, uh, Saman. Their distant homeland, their diet includes several strange plants that are supposedly edible, and many of these are now enjoyed as exotic delicacies in courts across Europe and the Middle East. After trading with Aztec merchants, enterprising farmers have sowed their fields with the seeds of a plant called Petito, while others experiment with tomatoes and maize. maize. Many nobles, however, have become enamored with a sweet drink called chocolate, made of the beans of the cacao tree, passing fat. Ver catch on. Ver, you hear? Ver. Aztecs spread disease. There is no end to the evils the Aztecs have inflicted upon this land. A strange disease emanating from their conquered territories has begun to spread throughout the old world. The symptoms are similar to those of the dreaded Great Pox, but this cursed plague seems even more virulent. Men skilled in the art of medicine have dubbed it syphilis, and all attempts to treat it have thus far met with failure. Now even those beyond the reach of the Aztec armies are imperiled at this disease, carried by refugees and merchants sweeps across Europe and the Middle East like an unstoppable tidal wave. We are being punished for our sins. It is time. Our holdings are well advanced. We must adapt and change, adopting feudalism. I imagined a situation which became more and more intimidating with an outcome that could mean life or death. I swallowed hard and decided that I would stay put and fight. Oh, wondering where you're cool, dude. And Denmark converted again. God has finally touched them. Also, Denmark uh, kind of ate with Jod. Good for them. Court chaplain Urgo approached me after the council meeting to request some more diplomats to aid him in obtaining more information concerning the rumored artifact. You shall have your diplomats. Find me the artifact. Find it. I tell you. I demand it. The city of Paris has fallen under the cruel yoke of the Aztecs. And the CN now runs red with the blood of the hundred unfortunate souls who were sacrificed to satisfying the demons masquerading as their gods. The Emperor himself has sent his accolades all the way from Tino to the Aztec commanders that involved. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. On his return, Bishop Booker hands me a richly decorated frame, can see a piece of cloth with a clear outline of a face. <gasps> oh yeah, it's not in there yet. Uh, those impressive find. This is though an impressive find. Finding artifacts is what I pay you for, dude. Also, we are not wearing our armor because we were a child when we inherited. Uh, we also need to equip our sword. Yeah, there we go. Now where's our? Where is it? The image of Edessa. Quality three. Ooh, taxes and health. Nice! 
burn the apostates. How dare you? The fall of the Great Plains. The Aztecs have come to terms with their fear of horses, and several breeders have been established in the valley of Anluk. Anhuk? Anhuk? In their homeland, there is precious little information from overseas, but from what can be pieced together, it seems the Aztec have used their new cavalry regiments to great effect in finally pacifying their stubborn rivals on the northern plains. The Shoshone Dominions and the Sioux Commonwealth have already been incorporated into their growing empire, and Aztec armies are now marching towards the last holdouts of the free Iroquois city-states on the Atlantic coast. It may only be a matter of time before the entire continent is ruled from the great imperial city of Teno Tenochtitlan. I can't say that word. Can't. The same must never happen here, but it's it's already happening, game. It's already happening. I am starting to think Conang might fancy me. Oh, he's ugly, but he's strong. Make a move. Does he take us? Will he accept us? It is good to be the queen. Yes, it is. A fever. We are confined to our bed, our body raked with aches and chills. You have contracted the flu. Oh no! As long as you know what you're doing, sir. <gasps> Christina presented you with the charred carcass of a cat and prompted you to dig in. As you ate, she told you how she had chased the plump feline around your holdings for hours. You felt that she wanted praise for her hard work, but the vile taste of the meal kept you silent. Probably shouldn't have agreed to this. Uh oh. Uh-oh. The red powder was tantalizing in color. A servant had made the mistake of tasting it in its pure form. His tongue had swollen up badly, and Christina had chastised him firmly for it. Christina poured the spice into a chalice of water and stirred it meticulously before feeding you a spoonful. I actually feel better. Okay, you're forgiven for the cat thing. Maybe. Cured of the flu. We were recovered. I wouldn't say we're cured. But very good. Ah. <gasps> I am surely with child. My husband will be pleased. Wow, we're finally having our second kid at 32. Good for us. We've only been married since 16. I mean, our, our oldest is 13. Oh, yes, make a vow to the virgin. We will... Be... Don't be temperate and avoid all excesses. Yes, that sounds like a good choice. The vow I made was not in vain. The Holy Virgin has blessed me with a healthy, strong boy. I must still keep to my vow. Yes. I am surely with child. My husband will be pleased. And we shall make another vow. We shall be charitable. Yes. I hope it is a, a woman accused of witchcraft in Vestas Land has been dragged before your court. Several witnesses have seen her performing dark rituals in her secluded hut. Possibly related to recent crop failures. She claims innocence and it falls on you to determine her fate. <gasps> Nonsense is this. Release the poor woman. Prayers have been answered. The seed plants are within me was indeed that of a wonderful girl, just as I had hoped. Beautiful Azalea. <gasps> and God be praised for her good fortune. She is no longer sickly. Dear, I must be the child, but my husband believe it is his. Oh dear. It does not really matter what gender it is. And here is our first grandson, Maple MacPine, who holds the blood of Harold Fairhair. Blood of Nial of the Nine Hostages, the Carlington Blood, Blood of St. Lilianigmatic, the Blood of Ragnar Lothbrok, the Blood of Vorturgian, the Parthian Blood. You have six bloodlines, my dear boy. No, six, seven, seven bloodlines. I'm sorry, seven. You are amazing. Now we just need a granddaughter. Oh, and our husband died of depression. I guess it's time for a new husband. No matter how many issues you deal with, they're always more demanding your attention as the cack of cack phone, cack, whatever, the noise of quarreling nobles echoes throughout your court. You suddenly snap and push your way through the bewildered crowds to reach the exit. I can't take this anymore! Mine has dragged his unfaithful spouse, Tanis Petunia, before me insists I should punish her. Daughter, you're pregnant and you're sleeping around. That's... A couple of days in the dungeon will do you good. Stop it. Stop sleeping around. Good. Oh my god, you had a giant of a granddaughter. Are we gonna be a giant? Oh. <gasps> okay. What's your name? What do we get? Petunia. I guess we get another Petunia. The world will not weigh me down anymore. I have a new spring to my step. Joy in my heart and a smile on my face. Life isn't so bad. Yay, we're no longer stressed. Oh dear, I must be with my child. Will my husband believe it is his? Good news, darling! It's 
smallpox spreads across the sea. It seems that plunder and slaves are not the only thing the Aztec sailors have brought back with them to their own shores. Rumors have trickled back to the old world, telling stories of smallpox pandemics sweeping across the Aztec Empire and its neighbors. The streets and alleys of Tenno are said to be littered with the dead and the dying, and the Aztec emperors commanded the immediate execution of all slaves and prisoners captured on the great eastern continent in an effort to stem the spread of the disease. Perhaps there is some justice in this world after all. Yep, you've been sacrificing a lot of people, dude. There's a group of carpenters in Ossus Land that are working together more and more as well as taking on apprentices. It's a situation that cannot be ignored, and so you need to either approve of this carpenter's guild to ensure you have a good reputation amongst the skilled workers, or you can outlaw them to make sure that they're not an impediment to the local market structure. Support the carpenters. Yes. Your steward comes to you one afternoon. She explains that she has devised a plan to bring in exotic goods to s by setting up a trade route with a foreign realm. Let's organize an expedition. The merchant ship for the journey will be fine. And our uh, our daughter's husband died of the great pox. I don't think she was the only one sleeping around. It is time to set out on the trading expedition. Hopefully it will yield good profits to foreign lands. A group of craftsmen have come to your court and shown off their work. They present you with fine goods, of which you are sure there would be a demand for in the realm. Noticing your interest, the craftsman asks for some capital to start up a workshop, saying they like the funds to do so on their own. Sure, this sounds sound investment. And, uh, Petty King of Upland, let us give you a dozen strong horses. Oh. Oh no. Please excuse her. I'm still trying to teach the barbarian this barbarian proper I'm Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Bad. Bad princess. Oh, uh, I will intervene with my charm and soothe the debate. Stop debating, please. Maybe we became friends with this dude. Good for us. And we sub. Yeah. Oh, and we've improved our education, too. This was a very profitable venture. With the new trade route set up, you return with the first batch of goods and sell them off for a nice profit. The influx of new wares will also benefit the economy for a long period to come. Excellent. More money is always needed. Um, yeah, no. We're not giving you 67 gold. No. Alright, we will support this tradition. And look who decided to come try and raid us. You. This little county of Gdansk. Gdansk? I do not approve. We may be wealthy up here in Iceland, but we don't share with raiders. Goodbye. Oh, cool. Thank you. Goodbye. You wake up and go to the window to greet the sun, and then suddenly realize that your castle garden has been neglected for years. Yes, let's build a real garden with a glorious hedge maze. I'll do it myself. We'll add some beautiful statues of religious figures. You know, in honor of our grandmother. Let's build a large fountain in the middle. My coffers are empty, but the church is rich. Maybe I should seize church properties to repay my debt. You know what? They're fat bishops. Seize them. Let's import some flowers. There's a spot that's in use. Let's add a cozy pavilion. That sounds romantic. All money must be spent for our gorgeous garden. Oh no. Oh no. An emissary from the Holy Father has come to our court. He announced that we are... Anathema to everything that's holy. We've been excommunicated. Oops. Um. But I like to see things flourish. We're, we're a gardener. Come on, Mr. Pope, man. Issue declaration of repentance. We're sorry. We stole the money for, for good reason. Also, uh, let's rent that dude for 45 gold. Sure. To Queen Petunia of Iceland, we have heard your passionate plea for forgiveness, and we are certain that you will be eager to prove the sincerity of your repentance by devoting yourself to God, taking a vow of celibacy. Well, we're 46. We can't have kids anymore. Very well. Yep. The Pope has requested that I prove my contrition for past sins by setting a, taking a strict vow of celibacy. Claiming that my liberty and attitude is what caused me to stray away from virtue. Was it really worth it? I think it was. I think it was. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Why don't we repeat things twice? I don't know. It's weird. I know it is. Oh, some dude's a saint. Cool. Congratulations, dude. You're a saint. And you actually do have children. That are too far away for us to talk to. Bad. So sad. 
the craftsmen that you funded a couple of years ago have returned to tell you their success. With your support, they were able to set up their business, and it's now one of the most profitable enterprises in Austin's land. Great. More taxes for me. During the last year or so, your son Oak has been spending a lot of time with the members of the local monastic order. You have also noticed that he spends many hours per week in pious prayer, then one day he approaches you asking for your permission to dedicate his life to Christ. Okay, I mean, we have four other daughters to pass on bloodlines, so that's fine. You can be a monk, dude. Enjoy. Oh, but we're not going to spend uh, stuff on you. Nope. <gasps> Word of an epidemic. We have reached news of an epidemic in the Western Protectorate. The information is vague, but word is people are dying like flies. <gasps> the Black Death approaches. It's coming. May God make all heathens suffer. Mayor Sinet approaches you and presents to you a request to buy a small plot of your land, Ossus land. Hard decision to make since he promises to pay well for the land. Yes, we need gold. We need a greater hospital before the plague comes. And uh, this is just making us all a bit more stressed. Apparently, becoming a monk at the tender age of 14 drove our son to be a lunatic. Go figure. I'm sure he will suffer in life. <sighs> 230 gold and... Okay, sorry. For some time now, the county of Ostisland has served as an unofficial training ground for your armies as there are plenty of open space on which to train abundant food to feed the troops. A group of senior officers are now petitioning you for money in order to erect an official regimental camp in the county. <gasps> This sounds like an excellent suggestion. Yes, we've gone to a bit of a debt, but look at all the good stuff. Except, you know, sending off, selling off land to the burgers. But we're great. Look at our income. It's glorious. Hope has been struck down by the plague. When will it end? Let us take after our ancestress. Debase the men's with less precious metals for profits, please. Oh, dear God. The HRE is being eaten by the Aztec Empire. The HRE is, uh, capital is banished up here to Ghent. Um, and it's also a bit ravaged by plague. Yay. Oh, blessed his past. Willow Enigmatic lived a pious life. What's that? Can we even talk to his kid? Nope. They're, they're too far away. They're Irish and they're over here in Jerusalem. Wait, who got his title? When did he die? He died this past year, then who got his title? History? This dude. Our brother. Oh. Congratulations, brother. He must have taken history on it? Nope, primogenitor. I don't know why his kid didn't inherit then. Oh, poor kid's had the snip snip. You're only eight. Oh god, poor boy. I guess you're gonna go sing. Okay, be, go be a good singer, boy. Will the Black Death cross the sea? I don't know. The world is burning, and then there's Iceland. Um, yeah, I, I'm glad we're an island. The faithful prepare for war to Norway. Let's go. It's been, you know, we went on a crusade when we were like, what, 14? It's been... 40 years? It's like twice as long as it should be, dude. We'll see how it goes, though. Um, yeah, you know what? Matunia. You have a kid. You're great. Okay. Except, you know, of course, the target of the crusade is uh, our friend over here. King Dyer of Opland. Um, yeah. We'll see how that goes. And the crusade begins! Crusade for Norger. Deus Volt! Opland, I'm sorry if my dear friend, you won't know what hit you. We apparently don't know what hit us, because now we have cramps. So this is unexpected, though I should have thought about it, is because there was a crusade for the kingdom of Norge or Norway. Uh, we immediately allowed ourselves to lead troops, and we immediately became a crusader, because of course, you know, uh, Iceland is part of Norway. Also, that's apparently Dijer Finland. Oh my god, there's Dijer Ireland in weird places. Okay. Things are, uh, things are looking weird. Yes, 
We are fighting this, uh, he does not look like Norse. What is their culture up here? I guess they're Germanic. Norse Germanics. Um, okay, interesting horse unit. There's a group of carpenters in Oxtis land. I'll support them. Willow McPalm. What? You, you, you're terrible. Bring out the branding iron. He's sadly he's family. Say it is ended. Praise God. Um, no, we don't want to play there. Iceland is our home. All right, boys, find your way home. And uh, ignore the gigantic Aztec Empire. But hey, look at this. England has conquered the British Isles. And we have, you know, the Kingdom of Norway under the Latin Empire <laughs> up here in Scandinavia. Okay. Oh, there's the job down there. Um. Oh. Oh. You guys escaped. You're no longer part of the Latin Empire. This, this world is a mess. It's a mess, and then we got over here just big blobs. Okay. But yeah, the Crusades won. Look at our gold. It's glorious. It's time to upgrade our beautiful, beautiful, um, great works. Sure, let's try and write a book about managing the realm. Steve! I'll allow the kitty to follow us home. Family first! Family first! Burn the apostate. I'm sorry, your family, but how could you? We spent all day walking the castle, checking in with every department of my administration. I had been hoping for a surge of inspiration in regards to my literary endeavor. Suddenly, I happened upon a construction site. The men hard at work. Perhaps they could use a hand. I could do this all night. Maybe I should. After years of careful planning, a zillion enigmatic has raised a large army of exiles, mercenaries, and hopefuls, declaring her intention to press her claim by force. She has a claim on the Kingdom of Ireland. Well, good luck with that. I guess reclaiming Ireland for the Irish, considering it's controlled by the Norse. And it's all over the bloody place. <laughs> wait, wait. Oh no, the Pope's still there. Never mind. And we're dead. Queen Petunia I has given up the ghost at age 64. She died of severe stress. She fought for the glory of God against the heathens in one of the greatest holy wars of recent history. She fought in two holy wars, actually. Long live Queen Petunia II! Blessed with an abundance of friends, Petunia is likely to find strong support for her rule. Long live Queen Petunia II! She's a uh, rather old, 45, past childbearing age, which is lots of kids, so good for her. And this was a long reign. Queen Petunia I ruled from when she was, what, 9 to 64? It's a long time. It's probably a long video. Thanks for watching, guys.